Kelly Jackson, you're the historic preservation officer for the Lac de Flambeau tribe? That's correct, yes. Okay. And you've been working on a project here for the past couple of years. You're taking the old boarding school that operated here for many years from, I think, the turn of the century on. Was that it? Yes. And lots of uh, Native people went through this school. And there was trauma with some of these people. And the effort today here is to heal some of that trauma. We heard from Don Coyas and the Walbriety movement. And you're going to be singing a song later on about a young Indian man and who went to this school. It's a song that moves you. What's that song about? Gawi Niwajasin is a song about a young man who was taken from his grandmother at a very young age and carried to the boarding school. And it was a song that was really created as a result of finding a letter from a tribal member that was written back in the late 1800s asking what right they had to take children from their families. And it made me realize then the horrific reality of stealing young children and taking them away, what that impact might be for, for grandmothers, mothers, for children. So the song is really about a young man's account, and it takes us up to his life today and how it's changed and clearly changing somebody's entire way of life in one generation. So the song is really capturing that story. We heard from Don Coyas about intergenerational trauma and how one generation heals, the next generation heals. How will this project here help that healing effort? The end result of the boarding school restoration project in Lac de Flambeau is really to create an interpretive center, a living, breathing facility, not necessarily the museum environment, although there will be an exhibit in the building that will represent the the living quarters of the boys while they were here. But the true part of this story is that, or true part of this effort is that it will house classroom space for traditional teaching, a variety of different forms of that. It will also house the Lacta Flambeau Historic Preservation Program itself, community archives, genealogy and research facility. Um, also will house the, the Ojibwe language program and it will house a archival facility that will meet the Secretary of Interior standards for storing paper archives. So we are hoping that altogether we're able to use this facility to tell a story, but most importantly, honor, honor those people. And what promotes healing probably more so than anything is recognizing what's happened and making sure that our young people realize that it's in their you know, I, I guess that it's their responsibility, that there's an obligation on their part as well to carry this on and to recognize why it's important to fight for, you know, holding on to our culture and our languages. I don't know if you have any children, but, you know, telling a child they can't do something or take something away from them and watch them fight for whatever that is, it's incredible. So I really do think that there's a powerful story that if our young people really are able to capture, it will drive perhaps and motivate them to learn more and to hold on to it. Speaking of powerful stories, a movie uh, several years ago called Rabbit Proof Fence was about the Australian situation with the Aboriginals there. And I just learned today that the Prime Minister of Australia has actually apologized to the Native people about the boarding school era. Is that something that you would like from uh, our government right now? Wow. Well, I, I honestly feel like there is some apprehension on the part of our government to not recognize many parts of American history, and most particularly those that are not necessarily beautiful or flowery, but represent bad policy, bad mistakes, and have devastating impacts on people for generations to follow. And I really do believe that recognizing those mishaps of even those relatives that came before you is, is the first step in healing. To say, yes, we had, we had a horrifying policy that had a devastating impact on your communities and are willing to say, we're sorry. That's really the first step in healing. So yes, I absolutely support the efforts of the Well Bridey journey in asking President Obama to look back over American history and be willing to say 
this was a tragic event, and I do and hope we're able to bring this story to the surface so that it promotes healing. This is Nick Vanderpie and Kelly Jackson for Indian Country TV. Chima Thank you.